Hello, hello, good evening, everyone. It's me, Reverend Kevin Lee, and welcome to Live with Kevin Lee. And uh, I'm your host for this show, and these are the programs where I'm interviewing people with uh, spiritual backgrounds, life transformational backgrounds, uh, businesses, professions, work that they do on stage, on camera, and even quietly in homes and neighborhoods. And these are individuals making a difference in the world. And uh, I actually want to just remind you guys, especially everybody out here who is viewing or listening this evening, to actually help us out, help us spread the light out into the world, right? So what you're going to do is you're going to look at the bottom of this video feed and you're going to see a little button that says share or it might even say on your channel, whether it's Facebook or YouTube, you want to you want to make that a live watch party. So you want to click that button. It'll ask you where you want to send it. You can send it to your own timeline. You can send it to a page that you have. You can send it to a group that you're a part of or that you have created. So that's a great way to spread the light out into the world. Be the change, as they say. And I just want to thank you for being a part of this evening's show. We got a couple of amazing people that I think you're going to totally dig the story. But I have a question for you. Have you ever known somebody who's been really just crushed by life itself, right? Uh, their beautiful personality maybe has retracted pretty quickly inside that body temple, locking away anything that you thought was familiar to you. And But against all odds, that person somehow, in some way, has actually found the golden key in their life. They found in that experience, in that challenge, in that mountain, they found inspiration. They found inner strength. Maybe they found uh, inner wisdom to even understand that something spiritual was taking place, a spiritual lesson, that silver lining. But more importantly, they found the drive, the passion to actually overcome that obstacle and to really to begin to fight that health challenge. And maybe even now to coach others into how to fight that battle and how to overcome their own health challenges in life. But I also have another question for you. And I wonder how many of us know somebody who has made the decision to die. I do. I know a lot of people, actually. And yet that, some, that somebody, someone, somehow survived it. And that survivor may even be, dare I say it, <laughs> killing it in life because they've they've made a decision to actually overcome to transform to move beyond the limiting beliefs that actually led them into that dark valley that dark night of the soul as they speak about and so that that person could be choosing to uh to thrive they could be choosing to live as a very beautiful example of the great potentials that are inside every single person and every, we know that every single person, if you've been on my channel long enough, you hear me say, we are each God in expression. We are whatever you want to call that, God, Goddess, Great Spirit, Grandfather. It's all an expression. We are all an expression of that great divine source. So my, my two special guests today are literally, literally the very inspiration by those very two deep questions that I just put forward to you. They are the, these two are the Law of Attraction coaches best-selling authors, motivational speakers. These are business entrepreneurs behind the brand, Be Greater. We're going to talk about that. I'm going to share some things with you. Brisa Alfaro is known for igniting hope and resiliency and inspiring her many clients to push past any limiting belief in their life by tapping into the power of the mind, the power of thought. And, and Jason Goss coaches others on changing their perspectives of life's challenges. He inspires his clients with this motto, and I love this. I pulled this off your page, actually. Awesome. Work on mastering today, and then do that every day. And I think that'd be a nice t-shirt. <laughs> <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to the show the beautiful Brisa Alfaro and Jason Goss, a bespoke gentleman uh, himself, of course. Welcome to the show, you guys. Good to see you. Thank you Thank so you. much. Thank, Thank you for having us, us, Kevin. You're welcome. Did you like that intro? I loved it. That was wow. amazing. You guys have like, earned it. Guys, yeah, that, I, we haven't had an intro quite like that. That was that was amazing. Awesome. That's Thank because you. I went to spirit and I asked spirit to guide me and to really just kind of pull them, pull, help me pull on the heartstrings of the viewers. And I, as I did a little bit of research into your background, I knew a lot of it, but I still went back in and did a little deeper dive. And, and I found 
uh, a lot of good information. And it really made me realize you, people need to hear this from a different perspective than what I typically give. So uh, that's why I did that for you all, because I, you um, deserve it. And what you're going to speak about is powerful. So all of you viewers and, and the listeners today, hi, Neil Quatrano and uh, Patty uh, Merrill. Good to see you guys. Uh, I want you all to make sure now that I think about it again, make sure you share this stream. I want you to share it to your other social media platforms if you can. Share it to your pages, your timelines, your groups, wherever you can. There's usually a button, especially on Facebook, that says, make it a live watch party. And when you do that, you literally share us, uh, uh, Jason and Brisa and myself, you share this show out into all of your news, news feeds to all of your friends. And if your friends click it and like it, guess what? It goes out to all of their friends in their newsfeed. That's powerful. And that's the power of social media. So I just wanted to remind you to do that as we, uh, we begin and kind of just do a little housekeeping. But I want to I wanna preempt our talk this evening and the sharing this evening with something very, uh, very important. Uh, many of you know that I am a nurse for 26, 27 years now. I'm actually a, a certified registered nurse anesthetist. I'm a, an advanced registered nurse practitioner. I've, I've got a lot of degrees, a lot of education, a lot of bills that I've paid off. But I will say this, from my nursing perspective, I need to educate you guys. So I want you to understand this, that what I'm going to share is from my, uh, my, my mental health background, my healthcare background, my nursing background. And so speaking from that perspective, and I want you to understand that the, the neurological trauma that, that Brisa is going to speak about and talk about, uh, it often leaves us with years of healing and years of recovery. And our guest Brisa will be, has been successfully fighting through many difficulties for a while now. And she's been creating her own healing journey through every step. And I want you to understand that you may notice during this episode, there may be moments uh, where she's quiet. There may be moments where she, she, she asks questions uh, when we may recognize there's an answer or the answer has been given and that's okay. So you may notice her asking a question a second time or turning to Jason, something like that. And we call that short-term memory interruption. It's a part of the condition that she's overcoming. And also you may notice something called speech aphasia. And that speech aphasia means that what I think in my mind, what I see in my mind, I cannot say. And so sometimes you, we may experience that with Ms. Brisa. So just understand that if uh, there's any pauses or extra questions, that's where it's coming from. It's still a journey of healing, a journey of discovery, and, and I just celebrate you. And I want to say this to you. I'm, I'm going to give uh, you guys a little bit of taste of one of my quotes from my book that I will be launching soon. And, it, and it's in the very first part of my book, and it says this. There is power and this is for you, Brisa, there is power in the human flower of you. Can I get an amen? Yes, yes. That's true. There God. is power in the human flower of you. You know, they, the yogis speak about flowers being the, 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 the expression of God's face or God's love on earth uh, in a very beautiful and attractive way, a mesmerizing way even. The perfume, the colors, things like that. And so just the beauty that you are, both of you, the kindness that you give, giving of your heart for other people, uh, it's powerful. And so that's why I wanted to just share that with you. That's okay, so beautiful. Thank welcome you. again. Welcome to the show. And uh, we just thank you both for making time on a weekend evening to be a part of this community in my tribe. Good yeah. to see you, Shalina McDowell. So excited to be here. Thank Absolutely. you. Absolutely. Now, I want to kind of just jump right on in because I know our viewers are mm -hmm. probably very curious but I want you, uh, either one of you, to uh, open up with how did this begin as far as your transformation? You know, tell us where it began and uh, about the overcoming as well. Well, for me, I was very busy. Okay. I was living in um, partly in New York City and in L.A. I was traveling a lot and I was just living my life. I was really busy and I thought that's how it was supposed to be just stay busy and at the same time while I was living my busy life Jason was also living his busy life mm -hmm. we were we knew each other but we never connected mm -hmm. um this way so we always kept in touch and knew what each other w was up to however we never thought that this could happen until 
we ran into each other again. And this was how many years later? So we uh, we grew up, um, we were part of the same circle of friends when we were in, uh, in high school, about 15 years right. old, 14, 15 years old. Um, and, you know, we lived our, our separate lives, but we always kept in contact with each other uh, throughout the years. You know, I was following her journey. She was following mine. And then here, 23 years later, you know, we reconnected and, and here we are today. Mm-hmm. It's <clears> been <throat> an amazing journey. Yeah. And, and it's, it's really neat how our, both of our journeys were so, so different, but yet we were struggling similarly. Um, his battle was very different than mine, but we still were struggling to find each other, at least find ourselves. Mm-hmm. Um, and we did that. And, and while, when we blended together, we realized the power of sharing our stories and helping others heal from our mess. So we, we turned our mess into a message. Yes. And Oh, I like that. I've never heard that. It's a good one. Yeah. Yes. So that's that's what we've we've been up to. I mean, we had no idea that each other was battling these things while we were. So tell your tell your story. Tell oh, your story. Yes. <laughs> so I was in New York when everything happened, and I was working as a very busy hairstylist and in the beauty industry, and. I was working on celebrities. My work was in magazines. I was, I was doing great. I felt like I was at the top of my game. And one day I was just about to, the day before I was about to go on stage or day after, I'm sorry. I was supposed to go on stage and share my gifts, which was the beauty industry. And I ended up going into a New York City hospital because I was having an allergic reaction to something, or, or so I thought, and I'm going to be on stage, so I need this allergic reaction to go down, whatever it is. Maybe they need to give me medicine or some potion that'll make it go away, and I decided to take myself in a cab to, the, to a New York City hospital. While I was there, I checked, I went to check in, I took my hat off and my glasses, and the uh, front desk lady says, okay, right this way. And she had me step away from this huge room full of people waiting. I passed them up and I was in, in a room with um, emergency room. And I thought, okay, well, it's not really that big a deal. It's allergies, but either way, they had me fill out information. And then I'm sitting there in the, in the uh, waiting area and they put me into a room now and they give me a gown to put on and I'm thinking really I don't have time for this I have to go like I'm I need to hurry up and so I kept my clothes on I put it on over my clothes and the and I'm waiting for the doctors to get there and just a a, a couple min- moments later I see a, car, a a boy that came in from a car accident and he looked like he was in a pretty bad car accident. They were all working on him. Meanwhile, they were also working on me, but I felt like I was not as severe as him. So I wanted them to leave me and go help him because I felt I was okay. I mean, I just have allergies, no big deal. And they're still working on me and hooking me up and talking to me as if I, um, I've, as if I, I'm not there. They're all talking about me and not speaking to me. So I was very confused and very frustrated. And so they would ask questions, um, you know, does she have anything on, is she wearing clothes under this um, hospital gown? And the nurse says, yes, she is. And I'm like, yes, I am, because it's not a big deal. But they didn't hear that. Nobody could hear all the things I was saying. Not until later, I realized that no one was listening to me and everyone was ignoring me or so i thought because i had already had a stroke and i have already uh, developed locked in syndrome so i was speaking in my mind but nobody could hear me it was all staying in my mind wow 
and not and not just any stroke. This is a pond stroke, which is which is in the brain stem. So um, most people that have strokes, it affects right. a certain side of your body, the left side or the right side. Mine happen in the middle, and so when it happens in the middle, the type of of stroke I had it 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 um, pretty much acted as a bar barrier mm -hmm. to go to finish to reach the rest of my body. Wow. So whatever was in my brain stayed in my brain, but could not exit and tell my arm to move, tell my body to respond, tell my leg to move, tell, you know, speak. I couldn't even do those things. So uh, I always describe it as when you have a stroke on the left side or the right side, over time it can repair. But if you have a stroke in the middle, which is your pons, and you develop locked in syndrome, whatever stays in your brain, stays in your brain and doesn't come out. Wow. So, um, I, uh, de I developed locked in syndrome and my family was notified mm -hmm. to come to the hospital to pretty much come and say goodbye because right. the odds of surviving locked in syndrome are less than 1% chance. Yes. Yeah, so let me, let me, let me, uh, tap in here. Okay. Um, <laughs> so upon stroke, which develops into locked in syndrome, there's less than five cases per year worldwide. So the odds of that, you know, are, are, are just super, super rare. You know, doctors in the medical field don't know much about it. So that's why she was given that, uh, that less than 1% chance. Yeah. So wow. I was um, laying there and I could hear, I was in and out and I could hear my doctors pretty much pronounce my fate. I mean, when you hear less than 1% odd, it didn't necessarily scare me. What it did was made me want to prove them wrong. Wow. I basically wanted to show that I don't believe that they're in charge of my destiny. Mm -hmm. That should be up to me and God. Yep. So I knew I had to do everything I could to show my family a sign. And I thought it was going to happen immediately. So my family was arriving one by one at the hospital. And I thought they were going to get there and they were going to see that I'm fine. But they got there and they saw a vegetable. Right. Because I was locked in my body. Well, then that news was pretty much given to my mom. Mm -hmm. And it was very difficult news for her to take to understand when the doctors kept trying to reiterate it to her in different ways like you know your daughter maybe even if she does survive she's going to be in an incapacitated state and she's pretty much going to be a vegetable um forever and my mom was very determined and she said no you don't understand the will of my daughter you you don't understand she will not give up and they said, ma'am, I know you want to believe that, but it, this is very serious. And my mom says, my daughter's very serious. So mm. my mom did many things for me while I was in this state. And one of the things that she would do was play audiobooks and she would play music. She would talk to me. She made sure that everyone that came to visit me in the hospital spoke to me as if it already existed. It was oh. as if I was already okay. That's law of attraction right there. Yeah. That's the law nothing, of attraction. Nothing but positivity, wow. nothing negative. You know, it was, it was, it was, if, if you're going to speak negative, you're going to leave the room. Mm -hmm. You're not going to do it in here. So it. she made sure that everyone spoke to me as if, Risa, when you get better, we're actually, le we're going to go to, um, you know, we're going to go do this or go do that. Or remember, you really wanted to do that. You need to hurry up and get out of this hospital right. so we can go and do those things that you were talking about. So everyone was talking to me as if I was just a regular person. I wasn't laying in a bed and, and having one-way conversations with them. So it was inspiring to me to know that they believe so fully in my capabilities. I just needed to tune into that frequency and believe in them myself. And sometimes we may not be strong enough to carry that ourselves. Sometimes we might need to borrow a little strength from other people. And that's exactly what I did. Oh. And so my mom 
would do things to help remind me of why I needed to keep fighting. And one of the things that she did was play an audiobook. And that audiobook was The Secret, which oh. also focuses on the law of attraction. Marvelous. And in the book, I heard the voice of Lisa Nichols. And she said, the first step is to ask, to make a command to the universe. Yeah. Let the universe know what you want because the universe will respond to your thoughts. Wow. The thoughts were all I had. And if all I had to do was make change my thoughts to what I really truly desired and clean up all my thoughts. Mm -hmm. So anything I did not want to happen, yes. I got rid of them. And I only focused on what I wanted. Powerful. And as a result mm -hmm. of that, my mom noticed I flickered my pinky. Oh, I love it. That's where it came from. Okay. Yes. Pinky what, the, what is a pinky move? So oh, I said it. Go ahead. <laughs> when when she when she noticed that flicker of a pinky, she ran and told the doctors, mm -hmm. my daughter's moving, she's moving on command. And the doctors disregarded it and they said, I'm sorry, I know you want to believe that, but she is locked in. Her odds are of, of surviving and coming out. These movements are involuntary. So my mom did not accept it. She had them come back and check on me. I love it. They held my hand up and I knew I had to build that energy all over again. And I had to somehow mm -hmm. get that energy to go from my brain through that barricade and my pons right. all the way down my arm, through my elbow, all the way down to my pinky. That's, mm -hmm. I needed to do that again. But this time I had, I was so tired. Yeah. I was so tired to try to do it again. The doctors are there. The, my family is there. The nurses are there. Everybody's there. Everybody's waiting. Come on, Brisa, you could do it. You could do it. And I'm like, okay, I just need to flicker my pinky again. That energy beam was kind of stalling. Yes. Did not make it to my pinky. <clears throat> One of my doctors and my neurologist put my hand down and said, I'm sorry, she's not doing it. I know you want to believe it, but she's not doing it. Many times that happens to us in life, right? right? We try so hard to make something happen and no one notices. Yep. But all you need, I mean, you could try a million times and have all you need is that one time. And so that's what I got. Right after that, my doctor says, my another neurologist says, I think she's really trying. Give her more time. Wow. Mm. All I needed was more time. Mm. and someone else to believe in me. Wow, that's, that's and, powerful. I want to ask real quick of our viewers yeah. who, are, who are watching and listening, um, have, you, have any of you experienced someone in your family who's experienced uh, a stroke or some type of a, a neurological a traumatic experience where they retreated or, or were somehow locked in or maybe even because of uh, ventilators and, and different reasons they their consciousness was suppressed. Maybe their drugs suppressed them or something because of the trauma. But uh, what is there something that anyone has experienced? Uh, I'd be curious to know, do you have a question for Brisa about that experience? Uh, she'd be happy to answer that. I want to yeah. ask you, Brisa, you mentioned pinky moves. So is that somehow correlated to what you do and what you teach? What is that a part of? Yes. So, so fast forward that um, I was finally able to show my doctors the pinky move. Wow. And after that, the whole room erupted and they were so excited. So that goes to all of my coaching. Mm -hmm. And basically what I coach other stroke survivors or survivors of life in general, I coach them, you don't have to move mountains mm -hmm. right now. You don't have to get up and walk out of the hospital. You don't have to get out of your wheelchair right. and start walking and running marathons. You just have to move your pinky. Exactly one, right. one pinky, one move, at pinky a time. move at a time, step by step, little by little, moment by moment, mm -hmm. we can get there. And then over time, you will come on those movements and move mountains. That's pretty amazing. I love that. Is this tied in with, uh, is this a part of your book or uh, is this a part of what's coming up uh, pretty soon? Yes. Yeah, so originally I wanted to name my book Pinky Moves. Uh-huh. That's I've really heard. what I wanted because that's my story. Yeah. It's all about pinky moves. However, nobody really knows what pinky moves right. is yet. So I had to introduce that in the book. Wow. And 
So I'm excited. Tomorrow is my book launch. Awesome. Um, Tell us about that. It's um, tomorrow at 10 a.m. I'm going to be doing a Facebook Live and introducing my book to the world. Um, I'll be talking about it, what's in the book, um, what has, what my journey has been like up, up to the book. I mean, it's, it's been a challenge because I do have short-term memory. <laughs> so I would write the book. I would be writing it or typing, and then I would go to edit but I forgot what I edited and mm -hmm. I, I would, I just kept messing it up. Goodness. And finally, Jason was like, Brisa, stop. I, I just, <laughs> I, I just finally had to take the book out of her hands and uh, send, send it to the publisher. I love it. She was, she was just, you know, nonstop. She'd go back and change something uh, and then realize that, you know, oh, I've already changed that over here. Or I've already said that over yeah. here in this chapter. So I finally just had to take it out of her hands and, uh -huh. and put it out there. It's a, the, it's a part of the condition. So yes. Yes, that's right. That's correct. Yeah. What's to be expected. So amazing. Now you mentioned 10 a.m., but is that Texas time? Is that Canada? Oh, I'm sorry. It's uh, California time. PST, 10 a.m. Pacific yeah. time. Pacific I Standard hope. Time tomorrow, 10 a.m. on Monday. Uh, tomorrow is November 16th. And so that'll be here in Florida. That's going to be uh, 1 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And for those in the United Kingdom that are watching this evening, that will also be, um, if I'm not mistaken, six hours ahead. So that'll be 7 p.m. Uh, 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 UK time. So, uh, and what do they get when they come to your channel tomorrow? So we have a brand called Be Greater. Mm -hmm. And we have a lot of merchandise that we we put on our platform and we have been selling all over the world and it's basically to help inspire people to be greater than their situation and whatever they're dealing with whatever outside influences just be greater and so that's our brand and the symbol is really cool because the letter b with the greater sign mm, um, share that with everybody oh yay yeah. see my awesome. So if everybody goes on to brisaalfaro.com and uh, opts in for the book launch giveaway, yes. um, we will be drawing a name on Wednesday at 10 a.m. Uh, for, for, a for the winner, we're going to offer a package of, of all of our gear uh, in one package. We'll, we'll draw a name and, and we'll announce it on, on Brisa Alfaro's Live on Wednesday. Um, the, book, the, the virtual book launch party will be on Brisa Alfaro's Facebook Live on Tuesday at 10 a.m. And we're going to be dropping uh, the free link to download the book on, mm -hmm. on, that, on that date. So tomorrow, the book will be free. The little gift to everyone for my uh, launch. Yes, Monday. I'm sorry. Not Tuesday. Monday. Monday. That's correct. So for my launch, uh, we, we wanted to do a little free gift. And also... Um, we'll be showing all of the things that we're going to be uh, sending the winner. So we have really cool Be Greater gear. We've got hats and beanies and um, Shirts bracelets. And bracelets. So I, I have this bracelet, um, No More Bad Days. I wear this all the time. Love that. This is to remind me that sometimes we can have bad moments in our days. We try not to focus on those moments because those moments can expand into days and weeks and months. Mm. However, if we just realize this is just a moment, <clears throat> it's a moment that we need to let it pass so that it doesn't grow roots and stay there. And we won't have a bad day. I this needed that no bracelet bad days. and I needed that bracelet when I was growing up. And that's, you know, that's. You'll hear about my journey too. Didn't that, that, we all? Didn't we uh, all? That's so true. Mm -hmm. I uh, definitely been there. Listen, I want to ask you real quick because I'm going to send this out into our viewership into the into the chat rooms. But uh, it, the the book launch will be tomorrow, and this will be at 10 a.m. Pacific Standard Time. And the the viewers need to go to brisaalfaro.com. Is that correct? Correct. Yes. Okay, so I'll send that out real quick. And uh, I just want to share with you all also an image because I want you guys to explain this amazing uh, merchandise image. I got to show you. Where's my picture? There it is. Okay. So I want you guys to explain what they're looking at. And uh, you can, they can see that symbol there. So, you know, kind of tell them what they're looking at and what does it really mean? Okay. So um, 
you know, months ago, uh, with everything that's been going on in the world, you know, it's been crazy. Uh, politics, you know, division, everybody's divided. It's, it's just crazy. I want everyone to love each other. So, so one day we're sitting in the house and Brisa is doodling on a piece of paper and, and she's got this equation written down on the piece of paper. And she's all into it. She's so into it. So I walk up to her and I, I think, you know, what, what is she doing? She's just, you know, so into this paper. And she's got this equation written down and I'm looking at it and I'm trying to figure it out. I'm going, you know, I, I'm not quite getting it. And then, you know, and then she tells me, well, look, babe, subtract division, multiply equality, be greater. So simple. And right away, Amazing. I thought, you know what? The world needs to, to hear this message right now. Isn't that great? So I took that equation I took it down to a local print shop. I said, you know what? We need to print this all over t-shirts and just ship it out all over the place because this is something that the world needs, needs to know. You know, they, they need this message. So, mm -hmm. you know, it took off. We put it online. Uh, <laughs> and it has been shipped in different countries. It's in the United Kingdom. It's in Italy. It's in Nigeria. It's, it's, it's insane how, how much this has taken off. So we created um, a, a, merchan a merchandise site, you know, because it was, it was growing so fast. That's your business card. Yeah, yeah. Right. Right. I think it's a great conversation mm -hmm. for people to have and they, they need to have it because yes. it is all about being greater at the end of the day. You just have to be greater. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. That's yeah. exactly right. Now I want to hear Jason, if you wouldn't mind sharing a little bit about your story, your walk through that dark Valley Oh. Right. You know, give us the dip, you know, give us the dip and bring us to the peak. Uh, Got gotcha. so, Share with us. Uh, okay. So Brisa utilized the law of attraction to her mm -hmm. benefit. You know, she did everything positive in order to heal herself. For me, you know, ever since I was, you know, ever since I can remember when I was growing up, I, I you know, all of my memories as a child were uh, with drugs and alcohol, mm -hmm. with abuse, with domestic abuse, um, forms of prostitution. Uh, so, when I was 15 years old, you know, I started noticing all of my friends and their family lives were nothing like mine. Right. You know, so it, it, it really started, started to eat at me. And, and at 15, I was at the lowest of my low, mm. you know, I, I, I started seeing that things were disappearing from the house. Things were right. disappearing from my room. You know, I was getting uh, my personal belongings taken out of my room to supply my mother, you yeah. know, to be able to pay for her habits that she was sure. she was stuck on so i i you know decided to take it into my own hands i couldn't take it anymore and i went into the kitchen and i grabbed a bottle of pills wow. and i swallowed about 15 pills wow um i i woke up 12 hours later on my bedroom floor mm. uh, i wasn't able to stand up somehow i managed to crawl to my bed and lay in my bed and i I slept all night. Uh, I really didn't think I was going to make it. My head was pounding. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I, I couldn't even hardly move. <laughs> wow. So yeah. when I woke up in the morning, you know, the, the main thing that I noticed was that nobody even knew that I had done that. Mm -hmm. Nobody even realized that, that I had tried to take my life. <laughs> um, so that, that really struck me. And, you know, luckily that same year, Mm -hmm. I had taken gym class. I had taken weights as, as my elective in high school. And the gym has turned into my outlet. You know, it, 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 has, it has turned into, you know, the way that I was able to quiet my mind during those difficult times. Right. And also it has turned into, you know, basically my outlet throughout my whole life. I've, I still use that as my quiet, you know, as my, my safe zone, a way to quiet my mind. So I, I, got through my hardest time by going to the gym. Um, I took all of that hate and all of that anger with me into my adulthood. Right. Um, my relationship suffered. Mm -hmm. You know, every, every relationship that I was in was just turned to shambles. You know, it was, it was horrible and it was sure. all because of me because I was taking all of that negativity with me everywhere I went not knowing that I was because I didn't know how to heal myself. So years <laughs> over, over 20 years after that event that happened, you know, when I was 15 years old, I was bringing this baggage with me and I was never, never able to forgive, never able to forgive my mother, never able to forgive my father. And then when I was 26 years old, my mom passed away mm -hmm. and there was so many things that were unsaid. 
Yes. So many things that, that I wanted to say to her, you know, tell her how I felt, tell her, you know, how it affected me as a child. And I never did that. So one day uh, after another broken relationship, I kind of sat there and I, I thought, you know what, I need to quiet my mind. I started going to the gym. I was at the gym six, seven days a week. You know, I, I shut myself off to the outside world. Right. And I just, just thought, you know, I really started to think about where my life was going. Uh -huh. I, I was trading one pain for another. I was in the gym. I was lifting weights. I was feeling the pain in my muscles. I was, you know, I was, I was hurting every day. It was trading that one pain for the other pain that I had been right. carrying around for so many years. So I decided one day, you know what, I'm going to go down and I'm going to visit my mother. I hadn't seen her since she was buried, mm -hmm. you know, eight years prior. So I went down and I sat with her at the cemetery and I told her everything that I wanted to tell her wow. before she passed away. And it wasn't until I was able to actually hear those words come out of my mouth, even though she wasn't alive to hear them. It was me hearing them and me putting a voice to them and giving myself grace as being a human. Was I able to start healing myself? Wow. Was I able to start accepting gratitude in my life? Wow. So I wasn't, you know, it, it, it took me over 35 years to actually learn how the mind works and how the law of attraction works and how you can utilize it in your favor. For the first 35 years of my life, I did it the opposite. I did it reverse. Wow. And the people that you hurt along the way, when you're carrying around that baggage and when you're exerting that type of frequency in your life is worse than any pain that you will go through yeah. as a child. It's worse than anything that you have to endure. Just hurting people that you love along the way, for me, was, was, was the most hurtful uh, yeah. part of my journey. The metaphysician that I am, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna put this out there, especially for our viewers and listeners, just as a counterpoint and a perspective to, you know, uh, touch upon what he just said, which was, you know, he's very concerned about how he treated other people along that journey, and I, for many years, I, I was a part of that as well. That whole, uh, you know, how did I respond to this person? How did I shut this door on that person? How did I take advantage of this person in, in X, Y, Z? But what I've realized in the last 13 years in my metaphysical journey is that the soul of that other person chose me to experience the drama that we both carried out together because it takes two for these souls to tango. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and so that person needed to be my victim. That person needed to be my perpetrator. That person needed to be my burglar, of, you know, whatever. Somebody, you know, beat me up, stole from me, took advantage right. of me, or I did the same to them. And so we chose those roles as souls to find our silver lining, to find, uh, you know, to realize that there's a message in the mess. That's absolutely right. right. So for, long, so for you, how did, when did you, or how did you discover that there was a message in all of the mess of your story? So, so this is, this is pretty interesting. You know, the way our, our paths have, have crossed, um, me and Brisa have known each other since we were 15 years old. You know, and and we shared a moment when we were 15. We kind of shared this look together. Mm -hmm. uh, it was like a 20 I second, remember. you know, I, I will never forget this look. And I always thought, you know, it, it was because we were destined to be together one oh. day. But I now realize that that look was, you know, we are destined to change lives together. Wow. And after wow. We, can't, we, we came together those, 20, you know, 23 years later, mm -hmm. um, she introduced me to the tribe. She introduced me to wow. Lisa Nichols. She introduced me to Matt Gill. Law and, of attraction. You know, the, wow. the way the law of attraction works. I was already on, you know, the journey of, of kind of learning mm -hmm. how my mind worked and how things were going in the right direction, but I hadn't completely had my breakthroughs. He wow. needed a little help. And, and I, I sure did. And, and <laughs> most men do. <laughs> well, it, it, that's absolutely right. It's so hard for us to tap into our emotions and, and yeah. to show any kind of, uh, you know, any sort of vulnerability it's it generally doesn't happen but i tell you what you know meeting lisa nichols personally and having her put me through breakthrough after breakthrough yes that's where my journey started as you know it made me realize that i suffered what i did in order to help people i endured what i did in order to change lives that's exactly, I, right. I, that's exactly I, right i wouldn't take it away i, I wouldn't redo anything the only thing I would redo is, is, you know, changing the way that I acted towards the ones that I loved. That's True. the only thing that I would change, mm -hmm. but I would not 
I would not want to go back into my childhood and change mm -hmm. it because I endured it for a reason. Understandable. And we, one of our viewers, uh, Kimberly Ann Winston, she mentions that her father-in-law had a stroke and he communicates as best he can, but she also wants to know, will there possibly be an audio book of yes. your uh, book that launches tomorrow? Yes. Yes. I believe that that's very important for my, in particular for my book, because when people are in the locked in state, they can hear you. They're aware of what's ah, going on around you, point. Mm -hmm. but they can't communicate. So it's very wow. important, whatever you feed their brain, mm -hmm. feed their mind with positivity and possibility. Mm -hmm. And regardless if you're in a locked in state or you're just locked in life and you're not excelling or you're not open to the possibilities of you know, anything that can happen. I mean, the world is at your fingertips, but you just don't know that they are, that, that it is sometimes. Mm -hmm. So I feel like absolutely it will be an, an yes. audio because. Beautiful. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Beautiful. I I, you know, I, I kept thinking, okay, uh, an audio book. I know it's a lot of work. <laughs> it's very detail oriented, but I realized why it's so important for you because I wondered where you were going to go with that question. But it makes total sense because the whole condition is about being locked in. And I know as a nurse, and a lot of people know, that when somebody enters a state of coma or even uh, enters uh, the near-death state, that, that those altered states of consciousness, the last sense to go is listening, is our, our, our hearing. And so there are a lot of times, there are many, many books that have been written, a lot of case studies and, and, and stuff done by, in, by neurologists and, and others where uh, patients were in a comatose state, not moving, not responding at all. Even a lot of the equipment were saying that the person was in a deep state of unconsciousness, and yet the person clearly remembers conversations, who was there at what time, what they did right or wrong. Yeah. Uh, and when they come out of coma, they document it, they speak it, and they yeah. write a book about it. And uh, they find out that they were, they were exactly right. And I yeah. always tell coworkers, you need to be careful what you say around the patients, uh, especially the those that are unconscious i work in the operating room doing anesthesia so I i'm very cognizant of guys 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 let's tone down the the language in here i know it can get a little fun and there's closed doors but you know the patient technically can hear e even though they're unconscious you know right. we don't want to yeah. put that inside them i appreciate so. that kevin that you even take the time to to specifically say that to them because it does make a big difference because when I was in a locked in state, I had different nurses that would come in and help me. And I was in, in a place where I couldn't even, you know, change myself or anything. Yeah. So I was getting people were changing, giving me baths, changing my diaper, things like that. Mm -hmm. So it was humiliate the most yeah. humiliating thing okay. that I ever thought I could endure. Sure. However, I couldn't respond. I couldn't even show that I was embarrassed. Right. As I was a vegetable, basically. Right. So, even though I was in that state, I w I don't know if I just seemed like a safe fly on the wall, but I would hear some of these conversations yeah. from nurses and doctors, and I, I mean, for the most part, they were all so good to me. But oh. every once in a while, I would hear about their shenanigans over the weekend and i was oh, gray's anatomy is real for a reason <laughs> let me tell you i've worked in the hospitals i've i've walked into stairwells and i like, let me go back to my unit i don't need to be in the stairwell <laughs> so there's some shenanigans so yes yeah. and there's personalities they call them human beings in every hospital mm -hmm. and uh let me let me ask you again somebody uh paula uh, waziri would like to know what is the title of your book uh so technically i'm not allowed to release oh it that's tomorrow. fine that's fine that's fine you got to tune in to find out yeah tune my in. publisher will give me the okay not when i can release it um but i'll give you a little hint mm -hmm. um i, I, I want to know what the little how are you, you going to do this i don't know I mean, <laughs> <laughs> be careful okay don't get in trouble your, your book coach will be very upset oh uh, yeah let's let's just say it starts with an l let's do that okay that's good enough oh, that's okay <laughs> well let me let me ask you this uh um you know the, sue townsend is here with us today and she says uh this is an amazing survival experience very touching and she's uh saying thank you very much for sharing your story and i'm getting a lot of uh comments mira love 
uh, which is a gorgeous name. Anybody who's called Love. Uh, yeah. her name. And she says, thank you. Thank you so much. And she says, what an inspiration you are. Uh, Kimberly Ann says, thank you. Thank you. Uh, people are, are, are uh, Paula Waziri wants to guess. Uh, we probably shouldn't go down that road because <laughs> we have a lot of psychics on my channel. And you psychics need to behave because we can't be <laughs> telling the muggles what the title of this book is yet. But let me ask you this, uh, because this surprised me. I didn't, I've known you for probably three months and we're doing some uh, training and development together on uh, business programs, but I, I didn't even know until about 24 hours ago, you were on the doctor's television show, which I love. And, uh, and because they always present peculiar things and, mm -hmm. and I like to just see what, it, what are the professionals say from all the different branches. So what was that experience? How did they, what, how did they even find you? And then what has that done to your uh, coaching business and your speaking business? So at first I was reach, I reached out to a few different uh, networks mm -hmm. because I wanted them to bring light to stroke survivors that develop locked in syndrome, right. um, stroke, uh, stroke survivors, young stroke survivors, people in their twenties and thirties, how they um, come out of their stroke. Because a lot of times when a, uh, someone that suffers a stroke in their 70s or 80s is different than someone who suffers a stroke in their 20s or 30s. So I, I wanted to bring light to it. So right. I, I reached out to them and, and talked to them about it, but they were more interested in my story than oh. the story I was pitching. Mm. So um, I sent it to them, forgot about it, maybe, I don't know, a year later. Yeah, I think that was like three three years ago I think that you were on that wow. yeah a year later they reached back out to me and they asked me if I would be interested in being on the show and I was like me wow okay mm -hmm. so I they did not prep me they didn't mm -hmm. tell me what questions they were going to ask so typical so typical yeah. at least I did an interview with you guys don't forget that Yes, <laughs> thank <You're> you. Famous. <laughs> I prepped you. <laughs> I think you. I think what she wanted to really put out there, you know, was was the story <clears throat> from the patient's point of view. Yeah. Um, I see what you're saying. Which yeah. is not something I think that, uh, especially with her condition with the lock-in syndrome, is yes. that, that's, that's very well known. So I think that that could be super powerful for the medical industry is mm -hmm. to to actually learn what yep. was going on in her mind, you know, when she was locked in, those thoughts that she was having. I think that that if it was more known, you know, it could it could have so many more, you know, so much more greater of an outcome mm -hmm. if they were to understand exactly how the power of the mind works. You know, it's interesting. I, I didn't mention this earlier, but it popped back in my head again. You know, it's interesting that most people and I and, and I hope this it really inspires the viewers and listeners because uh, I think it's important. Uh, I remember years ago, a patient came with me to go into the operating room. I was going to do the anesthesia. And they asked me if I if they could bring with them a little uh, iPod, you know, and little earphones. And I thought, well, I, we're not supposed to really take anything. Jewelry and everything has to stay at the bedside. We, we don't want to be responsible for anything. We're going to maybe damage it or electricity could ruin it because we use a lot of electrical devices. And uh, we're in current is always moving around the operating room. So uh, I, we allowed it, the doctors allowed it, but it was interesting. I said, what are you, why is this important? What are you listening to? And the, and the lady said, uh, and this was at the very beginning, this was actually many years ago, now that I think about it, uh, probably 13 years ago in the beginning of my journey. And she said, I'm, I'm listening to affirmative, uh, affirmative prayers and, aff and affirmative mantras and, and very positive things with beautiful uh, higher frequency uh, audio that that bounces between both sides of my brain to activate it, which helps me to heal. And I was like, "What the heck? This is meta woo woo." It's it's it was a little much, but when I listened to it, it was beautiful. It was a, a woman's voice guiding her, reminding her, "You are perfect. You are whole. You are moving towards wholeness. Uh, uh, you know, allow the wind that you hear right now to." To, uh, to be the spirit of, of the angels moving around you. This, this is the wind from their wings. And it was, it created an atmosphere that was truly, I remember, it was truly magical. And I thought, you know what, if I had surgery, I would want to listen to something like that. Because 
it was a such a healing thing. And so I want as an advocate, you know, for patients, I'm always saying you fight for your rights. You don't listen to the hospital staff. <laughs> if you yeah. want something, you ask for it, you push for it until they say yes. Yeah. And so I will say this for anyone going undergoing any type of surgery, take a small device with you, you know, a little electric device, a recording of something healing and beautiful that will keep you in a, in a, a high vibrational state of, of, of healing and uh, ask that that be placed on your pillow or in a little bag next to you while you listen to it, while you're unconscious or under anesthesia. And I think that's a beautiful thing to do uh, for patients. So my little two cents there. Yes, definitely. That. And anything that you're going through in life, you know, even every day do that. It, it changes the frequency that you're living, you know, it changes the energy that you're putting out. If you're bringing that, that kind of energy in, you know, that's what you're going to expel back into mm -hmm. the universe. That's, that's amazing. Wow. Jason and and I, mm, go ahead. Jason and I listen to positive affirmations every morning. Mm -hmm. And we can even be in <clears throat> kind of a negative state sometimes, like with everything that's going mm -hmm. on. Yes maybe open a bad email or an email that doesn't put you in the right state or something or, or a bill. Oh, yes. <laughs> yeah. Yes. That's so true. <laughs> we will, we will uh, listen to positive affirmations and, and listen to things about the law of attraction and, mm -hmm. and, and, and things like that. So we can get ourselves in a better state throughout the rest of the day and so that we don't keep focusing on the yes, negative because so it important and, and it's real real quick i'll say this that it, it, you may not even know this about me but i study a lot of the philosophy of yoga not necessarily mm -hmm. hinduism but i have read some of that mm -hmm. but i study a lot of the the true yoga the teachings that go back two three thousand years even actually further than that five thousand and what's interesting is a lot of times the swamis and the gurus will will say to the students the chillas you know, to every day to weed the garden of your mind of negative thoughts, yeah. because right. if you don't weed your garden, those weeds will have children and they will spread like wildfire. And so I always speak, I love the, the symbols of flowers and plants and nature. And, and especially when I write, you'll see that uh, infused. And, but it's so true. We have to be, what are we planting in the garden of our mind every day? That's right. That's and right. listening to music or listening to a news channel will fill your mind with the weeds of negativity uh, if it is of a low vibration or a hostile nature. And I think that does not support us. We know that we are consciousness. We're not a physical body. We're actually uh, electromagnetic and gravitational forces pulling and pushing. And But yet there's consciousness holding the essence of Kevin together as a human body. Something's holding it together. Mm -hmm. So we have to be in a, in a state of positivity, uh, a state of, of affirming constantly that we, we, we are on the mend or on uh, the road to transformation, if that's what we're working on. And so, like the law of attraction teaches, uh, wherever you place your mind, you will literally, the universe mirrors back to you what you give out to it. And I love yes, that. Exactly. Exactly. Yes. I mean, there's many times I've worked with uh, stroke survivors when I've been coaching and <clears throat> they focus on all the negative that's going on around them. And, and they focus on how they can't do this and they can't do that. And I often tell them, well, you're right, mm -hmm. because that's what you're thinking. Mm -hmm. That's all you're bringing um, to yourself is yeah. you're constantly thinking that you can't do this. Well, the universe will deliver exactly what you're asking for. If you constantly say you can't, it's going to deliver that. Yeah, it is. It's like a giant cookie cutter. Yeah. And so, and depending on what you focus on, the universe literally gives it back to you as, because it, it literally is a, as a neutral observer, it's just responding to what you put out into it. Uh, yeah. And so, I, you know, I've seen so many people that, that say, well, I can't do that. I could never do that. Well, they never did. They never do. Uh, and then there are people that say, oh, I will do this X, Y, Z. And you're thinking, oh yeah, you're crazy. You, you got big hopes and dreams. And next thing you know, they're doing it. Because Amen. literally they manifested it. They, yes. the, the universe, literally what you focus on, it begins to align you with the pathway, the flow, and, and you literally slide. You make your little pinky moves, baby steps towards yeah. that flow. And you once you get in it, it just gets faster and faster. That's uh, it. And, and, and Paula is saying, Paula Waziri is saying her mother just had a massive cerebral stroke about three weeks ago and she's 76. And they're incredibly grateful that she survived with no sequela, which means no symptomology, no problems. 
And nobody really knows how, but we know that she did. And it was the power of prayers. And I truly believe I have heard spirits say, when you pray, when you humans pray, <laughs> your thoughts are things in our dimension. And, and we see, and, I'm, and I've even read stories of people in near-death experiences who said, when I was hovering above my body, above the scene on the side of the highway, I saw a powerful light or a colored light or a column of light or something coming from this one particular car behind us, somewhere behind us. And it was going towards my car, but my body was in the car, but my, I was not in the car, I was above it. And later what they found out because the um, out of body individual who reported it later when they came back into the body, they knew the license plate, they knew names and initial street addresses of the person in the car. And they found out the person was praying hard for that person who had just gone into a near-death experience. Wow. So thoughts are powerful and prayer is a, it's even been documented in, by uh, scientists and universities and hospitals. Prayer makes a huge difference in outcome uh, yes. for patients. So I totally believe, uh, I'm a minister, I better believe it, but I do believe it because yes. I've, I've just seen over and over again, it does make a difference. Yes. And what, is, what is prayer? It's thought and it's, it's positive. Thought. And it's positive. It's conscious, positive thoughts. And, yes. and you'll see that in my book, I speak about that. And there's a story in there and I can't remember what chapter it is, but mm -hmm. I believe Kevin, you'll love, you'll love that mm, chapter. I yes, I know, yes. I know what you're talking and about. And speaking of your book, I'm going to drop you guys, all of our viewers, I'm going to drop into the chat room again, make sure tomorrow, November 16th, 10 a.m. Pacific standard time, 1 p.m. Eastern standard time. And all of my friends and folks and families over in the United Kingdom, 7 p.m. your time. You can put the triple down for a little bit. Go online. I want you to make sure that you're there because that's when Jason and Brisa will be announcing the book title. They will be sharing that particular link. You guys get to have actually a free copy of the book, a digital download from Amazon. Yes. Uh, and, and it's incredible. Once you've read it, you got to go back and you got to drop a review because only people who have downloaded that link directly from Amazon can leave a review. You guys got to be leaving some five-star reviews for my friends, okay? Because I'm yes, going to be watching. We're asking, we're asking for <laughs> everybody's you. help. We need your help because we're going for the international bestseller on this one. Yeah. So go go on the, on the Facebook Live tomorrow and, and get your link. Yeah. Absolutely. So when you guys go and show up for this uh, this live book launch party with Jason and Brisa, make sure that you share that to your timelines. Okay. Make sure that you share it uh, maybe in, your, in an email if you can during that hour because it's important that one hour is critical for bestseller status uh, in the whole publishing world. So uh, there's a reason to our madness and how we do things, but uh, uh, definitely we are, uh, it's been an incredible hour. I can't believe it's already flown by, but I wanna, I wanna, I want to ask you both one question. And you know, we're not supposed to, us intuitives are not supposed to uh, pick lotto numbers, but if you pick the lotto numbers and you won the uh, Powerball, multi-millions, Jason, what do you think would be the first thing that Miss Brisa would run out and buy for herself? Not for anybody else, but for herself. Peanut butter. <laughs> oh, really? Oh, I love peanut butter and, and honey. Supply of <laughs> peanut butter. I love peanut butter. Peanut oh my butter. gosh, I love it. Okay. Whenever hey. she, she's gone somewhere, I I, I look at her. Peanut butter. She's in the peanut butter jar. <laughs> okay. And Brisa, the same question for you. If you guys won a multi-million uh, dollar Powerball Lotto. What what do you think Jason would run out and buy himself first? A weight set. <laughs> oh, probably solid gold. <laughs> I don't know. I love it. I think I think that's that's what he he loves. He loves mm. weights. So right. I don't know. Fancy. He'd probably buy a gym. He'd set up a gym. Amy, you, know, right? you're probably, you're you you probably can't probably. you can't start a class. Do you at least sit down with him for thirty minutes and have a console? <laughs> right. I love it. Oh, that's fantastic. Well, Jason and Brisa, I want to at least thank you both for being a part of this uh, live with Kevin Lee, this hour of really just transformation and sharing a little bit of light into the world and positivity. And I just, I, you know, as I say every time, I want the world to see people who have walked through that valley of darkness or the valley of death, if you will, the, the dark night of the soul and, and gone into the valley, but you, you've now risen to the top of the mountain. You're at the peak, the summit and you're making a difference, you realize that there is a point of transformation ahead, or maybe now it's behind you because you've overcome that. And I wanna share that uh, potential for change, the potential to find your life's purpose and to leave a legacy behind 
uh, mm -hmm. through the people that you support, that you coach, the people that you make a difference uh, with, uh, you know, one-on-one -on -one in groups and in, in events, wherever you do that. And that's what this show is about. It's about exposing us to individuals making a difference who have made a change and, uh, and that are just uh, shining like crazy. I just want to celebrate everyone for being a part of this community. I love you all so, so much. And it's because of you that I do this, that I, that I have the passion, I have the fuel to do as much as I do with you. And I thank you. So until next time, I'm Kevin Lee and our special guest, Jason Goss and the beautiful Brisa Alfaro. We'll see you tomorrow at the live book launch party, 10 a.m. Pacific Standard Time. And that'll be 1 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on brisaalfaro.com. Signing off and we'll see you next week, you guys. Bye-bye. Bye, guys. Bye. Thank you.